What's going on everyone? This is Mitch. Hope you all have had a great Thursday. There's a lot to talk about with what looks to be Tropical Storm Claudette, which is likely to form around this time tomorrow, maybe a little earlier, and it's going to have direct impacts on the lower 48, on the Gulf states, the southeast, and there could be some significant impacts, and we're going to break all that down. We're going to check out the models. We're going to even take a peek at the short range models and uh, really get a good idea of uh, where this is going to happen, when it's going to happen. I know I had a couple comments talk about uh, kind of break down when it's going to happen in each location a little bit better. I know understand some of the font on these uh, videos are a little bit small, so I'm going to do a little bit better of kind of discussing that in this video and really talking about when and where this is going to hit. So we're going to go through all the models. It's really looking like we're going to have Claudette, like I said, within the next 24 hours. So um, we're going to break all this down for you guys. If you guys have not subscribed, definitely hit the subscribe button. I upload daily and uh, sometimes twice a day. Sometimes I'll skip a day, then upload two times the next day. I even upload when the weather's kind of not, there's not a lot going on. I'll still try to upload and talk about the potential pattern coming up. So hit the subscribe button, like the video if you like it. Um, uh, helps the video get out there in algorithm. And um, definitely hit the notification bell if you want to know when I upload. Y'all, support is amazing. I've had a lot of growth over the last 10, 11 days. And we've been talking about the potential for tropical development for the last two weeks. So thank y'all for tuning in. Let's get going with this. So the National Hurricane Center, this is the update a couple hours ago. They have brought the cone out. So this is called Potential Tropical Cyclone 3. It's not technically a depression yet, but it's saying the potential is there. And it's likely going to be a depression as we get into overnight. Um, but it's forecast to become a storm by around 1 p.m. Friday, the 1 p.m. update. And it's forecast to make, uh, make landfall as a tropical storm in Louisiana. You notice there's no tropical storm um, warnings really for any areas west of these uh, where they're forecasting the low pressure to make um, to come ashore. It's because, like I've been mentioning for about a week now, the storm is forecast to be east sided. All the impacts are going to be on the east side of the storm. I'm going to show that in the upcoming information here. But um, as far as estimated time, let's break down this. So, as far as the time where uh, you can expect maybe to tropical storm force winds potential. Um, they're going to make landfall around, that should begin to happen between 2 to 8 p.m. on the Louisiana shoreline, and then a little bit later, and this is talking about tomorrow, guys, so for, in, in 24 hours, and then potential for tropical storm force winds, maybe occasionally, uh, even overnight Friday into Saturday into Mississippi and Alabama, getting into Birmingham in the morning time hours. So there's a you know, we, we can go through all this. All this is available on the National Hurricane Center site. Uh, some small storm surge, anywhere from two to three foot. The worst case scenario in the bayou here in the swamp areas. And then maybe a little bit of storm surge, even in the Mississippi coastline and the Alabama coastline near Mobile Bay and things like that. But I don't, I don't see anything crazy or significant or anything like that. Flash flood issue. This is going to be an issue. There's a 20% chance of moderate risk of excessive rainfall of basically flooding um, in the next one to two days in this area. This has a chance to expand. Over oh, This is over the next three days. This have a chance to expand to the Carolinas, and I think it will over the next few days. So uh, the, the rainfall is going to be huge with this. How far is how much rainfall? Well, for Louisiana, they're going for the round to six, seven, eight rain inch rain as far inches of rain as far as rainfall you notice this only goes out to around sunday i think this is obviously in the coming days or probably in the next 24 hours be extended into the carolinas so uh, if you're, you're watching from carolinas and georgia there actually might be a little bit more rain than this this is just only going out to around sunday so there's not a whole lot to really look with look at as far as the rest of this um but this storm is on the heels so you look at what going, what's going on. It, it doesn't look any better than it has the last two days, right? Well, really, there's a couple vortexes. There's an area of convectional explosions that's going on here. And really, there's kind of two or three main areas. And really, the low pressure is right around in this area. Um, right in this area, you compare it to satellite, that would be right around here. You notice, okay, well, nothing's really reflecting that. That's because the system is surging tropical moisture on the east side, and really there's nothing on the west side. So this is where this, the airplane, 
this is where the recon mission went into this storm to try to find some kind of circulation. You know, it's a little airplane icon. And really, they didn't find much at all. They really couldn't find a defined area of broad uh, circulation. There was a little bit into here, but they found it. And you notice the winds right here, uh, 30 to 34 knots, 34 to 40 knots. You notice the highest they ever found was 10 to 20 knots. It's not very high, but this thing is just not organized. It's forecast to become organized very quickly in the next set 24 hours. That's why it's forecast to become a tropical storm. But let me tell you, this thing is going to be a sloppy looking tropical storm as most storms are in the Gulf of Mexico this time of the year. Really, any storm this time of the year really is always going to be sloppy looking. But here we go. So if you can't see it in your screen, right here is what time frame we're at. 06 Z. Friday is really overnight tonight into Friday. That's what that stands for. 12Z, when you see 12Z anywhere, think of that as the morning of this day. As we're getting to 18Z, anytime you see that, think of that as like early afternoon hours of that specific day. So this is Friday. So we're getting into around 18Z, so tomorrow afternoon. By this time, this could should be a tropical storm. It should be Tropical Storm Claudette. You notice this is what the circulation would be. All the moisture's on the east side, all the action's on the east side. Uh, there's really nothing on the west side. So if you're in southeast Houston, the coastal areas like um, Houston and things like that, southeast Texas, the coastal areas like around Houston, Galveston, I don't expect really anything, m much at all. Maybe some maybe some breezy winds, but, I mean, it's always breezy at the coast. Uh, according to the Euro, it's going to make landfall uh, just south of New Orleans. It's going to work its way northward. And really, I don't think it's going to weaken much. In fact... Uh, the structure of the storm might come more enhanced, and it actually might strengthen. Um, but you notice, this thing is packing a punch. Now, I'm going to get a little bit further up here. Let's go fast forward a little bit in time. So we're getting into, this is basically getting into Saturday evening, into Saturday overnight, into Sunday. Notice the tropical system's right over, the brunt of it's right over Alabama, just south of Birmingham. This is going to wiggle a little bit in time frame. This is going to wiggle a little bit as far as, where the heaviest precipitation and strongest winds are. As we're going through in time, this is around Sunday morning. This thing is bearing down on Atlanta, and moisture is getting all the way into the Carolinas. In fact, more moisture can get all the way into South Carolina as early as Saturday evening, I really think. Um, this thing might turn on the jets as there's a trough really forcing this thing to move quickly on out of here. So I think as we get into Sunday afternoon to Sunday evening, the weather starts to get really bad in South Carolina and into North Carolina. And it's just going to be several hours of really nasty weather. Now, if you look at the European, it has the bullseye that's going right over my house. I live here in Columbia, South Carolina, which is right here. You can actually see Lake Murray right here. I'm right up the road from Lake Murray. This is actually where I'm located. So it actually has the bullseye of whatever's left of this thing going right over my house. So I might actually be out chasing a little bit on Father's Day. So I guess that'll be kind of my Father's Day um, present a little bit. <laughs> so um, this is moving right over South Carolina uh, Sunday evening. And then by Monday morning, it's chilling on the eastern, basically on the coast of North Carolina. And it's getting on out of here. and has a chance to really strengthen um, as it gets off the coast, of, off the eastern seaboard. So and then you get storms initiated off the trough that's moving through and has the potential to cool us back off next week. You look at the GFS, which is kind of folded to the European, but at the same time, it's not really keeping that strengthening look like the European is. But makes landfall a little bit more west of the European model. But I'm telling you, this is where the biggest threat of rainfall is going to be east of the circulation. A surge of heavy rain is going to move through. And uh, it's definitely not as significant as we get into Sunday into Monday as uh, looking as the European. But check it out. So this is the latest HRR, long range HRR model, which were in decent range of the storm. So around um, tomorrow, let's see, tomorrow probably around 4 or 5 p.m. Um, Eastern Standard Time. Um, this is really beginning... So around tomorrow afternoon, low pressure is right here. Notice there's nothing really going on on the west. I'm also, I've said this a hundred times. There's nothing really going on on the western side of the storm. I've been saying it for a week that this is going to be an uh, eastern sided storm. Notice the surge of tropical moisture, heavy rain. And there's this is, watch this area down here. As you get into 
set Friday evening. It makes landfall near New Orleans. The low pressure pops off, and then it starts moving all through. This is getting into Saturday. I know there's some baseball games. I know a friend mentioned he had plans to go to the Braves game. I told him, man, that's not going to work out. It's just going to be a washout as the brunt of this tropical moisture. It actually looks better as it gets more inland, which is what the European has really been showing. This is as far out as this goes, which is 48 hours, but this is Saturday afternoon. Check out all the intense rainfall moving into South Carolina. This is already tropical moisture moving in Saturday afternoon. So if the HRRR model which isn't exactly this um, uh, gold medal winning uh, hurricane model, um, but if it's right on the time frame, it's really going to have the, the brunt, of, not the brunt, but a lot of tropical moisture already moving into the state of South Carolina and the Carolinas as early as Saturday afternoon, evening. So this is going to be a, a big time wave of moisture that we're going to have to watch here. Um, as far as wind gusts, this is still a very interesting scenario. Um, maximum wind gusts surge into the New Orleans area. It's going to be very gusty for your Friday evening, Friday night. It's just a good, a, a good Friday night to stay indoors. Um, along um, the bayou and just uh, basically the swamp areas in New Orleans and Mississippi and Alabama um, and even the extreme eastern areas of the panhandle of Florida. It's going to be just very breezy and uh, very rainy. But this moves through. This is getting into Sunday morning. The brunt of the gustiest winds is starting to move through Georgia. And then the winds really start to pick up Sunday. Yeah, as early as Sunday morning into Sunday afternoon as you get into South Carolina. And then there might be an enhanced area of increased wind. And we're going to talk more about that when we are really starting to get a little bit more confident about it, which I feel like is tomorrow. But notice this enhanced area of winds as it gets into Monday afternoon off the coast of North Carolina. That might, if the European tracks the way it's showing, that's going to bring some nasty conditions on the outer banks and um, uh, the eastern coast of North Carolina. So we'll watch that scenario because um, that, that would be significant. As far as rainfall from the, from the European model, um, this is what it shows. It shows the brunt of this going and surging up into the coastal areas of Mississippi and Alabama. And then it has several inches, anywhere from two to four to five, six inches of rain. And even a lot of rain to Atlanta and central Georgia. A lot of rain into central South Carolina. And uh, there's a sharp cutoff, though. Um, which is interesting. Now you look at the GFS as far as rainfall. Um, check this out. It's a little bit more north. It's actually a little bit. It's favoring. In fact, the the cone for the National Hurricane Center is actually favoring more kind of on the GFS path. Um, so, for example, Columbia, South Carolina, on the European shows four to five inches of rain. On the GFS, it shows half an inch of rain. So there's a lot of disagreement on how much rain is going to fall still. So that's a big question mark, but Regardless, in areas like New Orleans, um, into Mississippi, south, southern areas of Mississippi, and up into Alabama, there's going to be several inches of rain and big time flooding threat. So, um, I want to show you this because this is very interesting. I'm always learning. Notice this is around right now. You have like dual vortices right here. And basically, these are, and I mentioned this last night, you got two energy, two areas of energy fighting for each other. Well, finally, this one just kind of break, breaks off this little spin and heads almost to South Texas. And then this one takes over right here. And this is when you get the chance for a tropical storm to develop. And it makes on shore. And uh, it looks intense as it moves through the southeast. And it really gets its act together. Um, it really gets a good spin going right off the coast of the Carolinas and Virginia. Um, this thing actually might be its strongest off the coast, off the eastern seaboard might really rip some waves up on the Massachusetts and Cape Cod and things like that. So who knows, it might be a little bit more north and might ride the um, Atlantic, uh, mid-Atlantic and northeast coastline a little bit more. So we'll watch that. I want to show you one thing, one more thing here, and um, I'll be done blabbing my mouth here, um, is the potential for a severe weather threat. The southeast sides of a storm, even the east side, um, or the worst sides of the storm, especially with more stronger storms. If the European plays out, that's going to basically put the center of low pressure right over central Georgia into central South Carolina. And this is around 8 p.m. Sunday. So areas right into here have a chance for a tornado threat. Now, how significant that tornado that's going to be, I don't know. But there's always a, a little bit of a tornado threat with tropical systems 
on the southeast quadrant of storms and the eastern quadrant of storms. Um, so depending on where this low pressure is, if it's up here, that puts more of this area in the threat. If it's down here, it puts more of the coastal areas in the threat of tornadoes. So we have to watch out. That's a wild card. So um, this is going to be a nasty little quick hitting storm, a little bit, a lot more actually impactful than I thought it was going to be further inland. So um, don't need to just pay attention for the Gulf stage. You need to pay attention for Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina also big time, and Panhandle, Florida. So that's all I got, guys. Thank you all for tuning in. Thank you all for the incredible growth, and we'll continue to break this thing down in the next 48 hours and as it reels in and affects all of us here in the southeast. Y'all have a blessed evening, and thank you all for tuning in.